Howdy doody doodle noodle. I love noodles. <laughs> hey there guys, this is NDM here. Welcome back to another episode. Let's play Super Metroid. Okay, so in the last episode, we watched a bee bust his honey nut all over this dead soldier over here. Because as you can see, there's honey seeping from his dead decaying corpse. And in this episode, we're going to fight Kraid. Oh yeah. <laughs> right, so let's do this. Let's initiate the boss fight. The ultimate Metroid boss fight. Um, probably more iconic than... Well, no, I wouldn't say it was more iconic than Ridley. No way. But, yeah, everyone seems to forget about the Crocomire, Phantom, you know, all those other boss fights that you fight in this game. Right, okay, I think missiles you have to use on this guy, I'm not sure. Uh, oh, yeah, we got the charge beam, what the hell am I doing? Yeah, I forgot we had the charge beam. Yeah, hold that, hold it down. There we go. That's how we do maximum damage. And now it's going to break through, break through the ceiling. And now this is the real Kraid fight, he's actually grown ginormous here. Yeah, this boss fight kind of gave me a lot of troubles the first time playing this. Because he shoots out those platforms and he shoots out all those little tiny projectiles that hit you. But also the platforms can hit you out the way as well, like that. So you have to dodge quite a lot of stuff while trying to hit this guy. So you have to have like cat-like reflexes and try and dodge. Good maneuvering skills. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing pretty bad at the moment. You know what would be cool if someone could make like a hot bead. You know, like those hot bead designs that people do of like video game characters. It'd be cool if someone did a hot bead design of um of Phantom. I'd love to see that. That would be so awesome. Because I imagine someone's done one of the Crocomire and things like that, but Phantom. That would be pretty damn hard to do. Because he's like a ghost and everything. And... Oh crap, I'm doing so bad at this. I'm getting raped up against the wall by all these platforms that are coming out of his stomach. Like, what are those things, man? <laughs> are they like, um... I don't know, what are they? <laughs> He's not even discoloring yet, because that's kind of how you tell when the boss has taken like a lot of damage is when the boss starts discoloring. It's like the same with the spore spawn, except the Crocomire doesn't do that. The Crocomire is actually the easiest boss in this game. For such an epic death, it's such a easy boss. Yeah, probably one of the most epic deaths in video game history, actually. Okay, you know what, I'm just going to grind for health here, because I'm starting to run low, and I need health. Okay, that was great, thank you. I just really needed to be hit by that platform that you shot straight out from your stomach. Okay, the back of my uvula is starting to mess me up <laughs> while I'm talking. It's like, a, it's like a weird tickling feeling at the back of my throat, and it's irritating. Ah, oh, he's done that twice to me now. Twice. Stop shooting platforms, okay? I'm trying to get health here, but all you're doing is shooting those platforms and making me fall into the spikes, and I'm losing health every single time you do that. And it's not fair. It's not fair, I tell you. Just hold your horses, mister, while I get some health. Right, you know what? I'm just going to stand here on this platform, and I'm just going to wait, okay? For you to give me some health back. Because I don't understand. I was on full energy tanks and everything, and now I'm dead. I'm gonna die. If I don't get any health soon. That was close. <laughs> uh, I almost jumped at the wrong time there. I kind of want to say YOLO and go for it, but... It's too risky, man. Uh, with, 40 ha with 40 energy left, and no energy tanks, no reserve tanks, yeah, pretty dodgy. See, I'm going back to 50 and then I'm getting bunked down again because these things just aren't giving enough health back. See, and his hand is just cock blocking my beam. Stop doing this to me, Kraid. Yeah, you really do need to use your charge beam on this fight, don't you? Okay, that is going to be worth it to get. Hell yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Alright, okay, now now we're doing some damage. 
Yes. Right, okay, Kraid, you're going to die. You are not going to beat me. Yes! And as you crumble down to the ground, I laugh at you. <laughs> Alright, and he, he drops us some lovely pickups for us to collect. And refill all our energy and missiles to our heart's content. Alright, so let's see what you got locked up in your storage room over here. What have you been hiding all this time? Oh, he's been hiding the Varia suit. Or Varia suit, I don't know. I say Varia, because it sounds better that way. Cool suit transformation. Yeah, we've got a more orange glow to us now. We're not yellow anymore. <laughs> so, and it also actually helps out in Norfair because you can survive in the heat. It's a lot different than the various suit in the original game because the various suit in the original game only let it, it, let it increased your health or your attack damage. Like you could resist more. Uh, you can resist more. Um, attacks that enemies give out to you. So if you, so, yeah, it's like a defense increase thing. But in this game, it's um, it enables you to access areas that you can access before, such as the hot, scorching, scoldering areas of Norfair, which are now open to us. Yeah, Craig, we just, you, you know, you don't need to come out and fight me. I just beat your granddaddy. Like, I don't need to fight you. To prove that I'm worthy. <laughs> All right, so if we come up through here again, we will have to come back to Kraid's hideout again because there's another missile pack. I think it's either a missile pack or a power bomb expansion, but I am confident that it is a missile pack. But you need power bombs to get it. So when we get our power bombs, that's probably going to be the first thing I do in case I forget. You know, there's no point in like leaving it till later on in the game and then forgetting about it. If you come in here. You'll find that this room is empty, but in fact it isn't. There is actually something in here you can pick up. If we kill all these things first. Now, I don't, this is another one of those things that you wouldn't know the first clue of what to do. Shoot the f ceiling here and you find yourself another energy tank. So that gives us three in total. Hell, we're doing good so far. Are we ready to take on Norfair? No problems. There's actually quite a lot of stuff in Norfair. Most of the pickups we'll be getting is in Norfair, but like missile packs and stuff like that, you know. <clears throat> but there's nothing that we can do in um, Criteria at the moment, as far as I know. Um, there will be once we've no, not Criteria, Brinstar. Yeah, there's not a lot of stuff we can do in Brinstar, but once we get some of the pickups that we can get from Norfair, we'll go back to Brinstar and get some stuff there as well. Such as power bombs and things, because that's where you get the power bombs. Okay. Right, you don't want to go this way because that'll lead you to the ice beam, and there's nothing you can do with it um, just yet. Because once again, you need power bombs. <laughs> yeah, everything in this game, power bombs. No, I'm joking. It's all missiles mostly. Even though there is a lot of stuff in this game that requires power bombs, I mean, it's mostly missiles that you'll be needing. Right, there is a missile pack that you can get in here. Now, even though we're invulnerable to the um, temperature in Norfair, we're not actually invulnerable to the lava. The lava does still take damage to you, as it does in Metroid Prime as well, so the same attributes to that game. But, you know, you think you're invincible and everything in Norfair? Well, nope, you're not. <laughs> I think it might be this hole right here, or this little indentation in the ground where you have to roll into it as a morph ball. Actually, no, it's this side. Yeah, it's around here. Sorry about that. Get out of here, you flying, hopping piece of shit. Yeah, you roll down here and bomb this out. This will take quite a lot of health away from you, but it's all worth it once you get a missile pack. <laughs> so there's another one down there for you. And it'll be a lot easier to get once you get the gravity suit, because the gravity suit makes you invulnerable to lava. Yeah, you don't get you don't take any damage once you get the gravity suit. All right, are we getting closer to that room that I'm thinking we're getting close to. I think so, because there's a lot of stuff we'll be doing in that area in Norfair. When when we come to it, I'll point it out. I think it's the next room. 
these things are annoying. They weren't so annoying in Metroid 1, though. Because the lava they shoot barely touched you. Like... Yeah, this is it. This is the room. With all the green bubbly stuff in the background. Right, there's a save state here, or save station. I'll save state. Well, technically it is a save state. I'm going to call it save state station. Whatever. <laughs> okay, guys, I'm going to end off the episode here and continue on in the next episode. So, in the next episode, let's play Metroid, uh, Super Metroid. We shall be exploring this green bubbly area of Norfair to find some more luxurious pickups. So, until then, this is NDM saying thanks for watching. Take care, we'll see you in the next video. And goodbye.